Hello everyone. Anyone who has ever ordered a test for Lyme disease should hear what I'm about to say because this is getting out of hand. Unfortunately, the way many doctors approach the diagnosis of Lyme disease is exactly opposite to what it should be. We all know that Lyme disease can present with very serious symptoms, especially if it affects the central nervous system. And we also know that some patients continue to experience debilitating symptoms for months even after appropriate treatment and no one really knows why, no one knows what to do about it. So now everyone fears Lyme disease. As a result of this, millions of tests for Lyme disease are performed annually in North America and Europe and truth to be told, most doctors who order these tests don't have a lot of experience with Lyme disease especially with the later stages that stir so much controversy and attract media attention. And I don't mean that as an insult, really. It's just not their area of expertise. But what they do know is that Lyme disease can present with all sorts of weird symptoms. It's called the great mimicker, right? So whenever they see a patient with unexplained headache or muscle pain or joint pain, uh, fatigue, insomnia, cognitive impairment, and they don't see the cause right away, they will test them for Lyme disease, just to be sure, right? And they've read that our modern antibody tests are highly sensitive and specific for late Lyme disease, close to 100% sensitive and 99% specific. And this, of course, gives them a lot of confidence. I mean, if the test is 99% specific, why would you doubt it, right? But this is the key problem. Everyone always talks about the sensitivity and the specificity of a given test. But specificity alone does not answer the most fundamental question every clinician should ask themselves when they see a positive test. How likely is it that this test represents a true positive? Meaning, how likely is it that my patient with a positive test truly has the disease in question? And this cannot be answered by specificity alone. This is heavily dependent on specificity, but it's also dependent on the prevalence of the disease in question in the population that you are testing. And this is called the positive predictive value. And again, it's not just dependent on the test itself, it's also dependent on the way you use it. Think about this for a minute. If you test 100 people who don't actually have Lyme disease with a test that is 99% specific, you will get one false positive. This doesn't sound so bad, does it, right? But if you test 10,000, you will get 100 false positives. And if you test millions, well, how many people do you think are walking around convinced that they have Lyme disease when they actually have something else, anything, something treatable, something urgent? Think about this for a minute. But don't worry, it gets worse. Take a look at this study. There are many like it, by the way. They tested 1,200 blood donors, so very healthy people with no symptoms of Lyme disease or any disease for that matter. I mean, they are blood donors, right? They tested them for the presence of antibodies to Borrelia burgdorferi, the cause of Lyme disease. And about 4% of them tested positive. In some age groups, it was 8%. There are many studies in Europe where the seroprevalence in some groups was over 50%. Meaning, there are hundreds of thousands of people in Europe who are walking around, they have antibodies to Borrelia burgdorferi and they don't even know it. I mean, why should they care? They don't have symptoms of Lyme disease. But the trouble with these antibodies is that they can persist for life. And okay, these people are healthy right now. But imagine what happens in a few years or decades when these people do get sick. We all get older, we will get sick eventually. Many of these people will get heart attacks or strokes or MS or Alzheimer's, you name it. Some of them will end up with vague, unexplained symptoms, fatigue or headache or cognitive impairment or who knows what. Their doctors may not be able to find an answer, but they will test them for Lyme disease and voila, they will test positive. And someone will attribute their mysterious symptoms to Lyme disease that isn't even there. They will attribute their symptoms to an infection that happened 30 years ago. I mean, you don't have to be a doctor to see the danger in that. What if their unexplained mysterious symptoms are actually caused by cancer or something autoimmune or metabolic or not? 
Let's suppose that the underlying cause is completely benign, as it often is. Regardless, now they are convinced that they have Lyme disease. Their clinicians are convinced that they have Lyme disease, meaning the patients will probably be subjected to month-long treatment with antibiotics, completely unnecessary antibiotics, and this is not without its risks. So, what can we do about this? How can we improve the positive predictive value of our tests? It's simple. We only test people who have at least a decent probability of actually having Lyme disease. We have to ask ourselves two questions before we order a test. Number one, has our patient been exposed to vectors that transmit Lyme disease? These vectors being exotic ticks, meaning hard ticks. Only certain species of ticks that live in certain parts of the world can transmit Borrelia burgdorferi that causes Lyme disease. Now, our patient doesn't necessarily have to remember being bitten by a tick. Remember, ticks are stealthy, it's their job. But the potential exposure to ticks should at least be plausible, meaning, does your patient live in an area where there are exotic ticks that transmit Lyme disease, or at least have they traveled to such area? If so, have they been around the woods, or do they have a pet, do they hike, do they at least have a garden? Because if your patient lives in, let's say, Dubai, and they've never been outside of their country, there is no way that they have Lyme disease, no matter what their symptoms are. I mean, where the hell would they find a tick? Okay, so this is criteria number one, plausible exposure to exotic ticks. And the second criteria is, do your patient's symptoms fit the symptoms of Lyme disease? Yes, Lyme disease can include, among other things, unspecific symptoms like joint pain, muscle pain, headache, fatigue, but this is not enough. These general unspecific symptoms are not reason enough for you to order a test for Lyme disease. Remember that, because if it really is Lyme disease, there has to be something that is way more characteristic. And if you know the clinical presentation very well, you will find that. Okay, so the patient has a headache. Lyme disease can cause meningitis. Okay, how is this meningitis different from bacterial meningitis or migraine or any other type of headache? Lyme neuritis, how is it different from sciatica? Lyme carditis, the specific rash, Lyme arthritis, how is it different from rheumatoid arthritis or any other type of arthritis, bacterial arthritis? If you are unsure how to answer these questions, first learn that before you order a test. This is the key part that is missing in modern medicine. This blind over-reliance on diagnostic tests without actually understanding them is what plagues modern medicine. We have all the tests in the world, but we don't know enough about them. And then we find ourselves in the position where we are unable to interpret them. And this is how we ended up in this mess, this aura of mystery around Lyme disease. There are many things about Lyme disease that we still don't know. As I mentioned in the beginning, why do some patients continue to experience symptoms even after antimicrobial treatment? This we still don't know. We don't know how to deal with it. But the diagnostic procedure should be no mystery. I cannot exactly cover it in a 10 minute video, but if you want me to make another video where I explain the symptoms of Lyme disease across all stages and the diagnostic procedure, the diagnostic tests and how to interpret them, leave me a comment and I will do that as soon as I find the time. Thank you for watching, good luck out there and take care.